I would like to introduce Mr. Denny Depps. Typically, he's the one behind the cameras as our award-winning IHTN executive producer. His influence can be seen every week during Brave's Beat, which is our student newscast, and also throughout all of our live events, such as Board of Education meetings, sporting events, and art events. In fact, last year, Denny was recognized by the Indian Hill Foundation for his long career impacting many others through the Brave Service Award. Before we get into our typical question and answer session, let's take a minute to review Denny's wonderful career as published through the Indian Hill Foundation's video. The Indian Hill Foundation is proud to present Brave Service Award. My name is Dennis Duffs. I've been at the Indian Hill School District since 1969. That was my first hired year. I was 21 years old. I'm in my 53rd year at Indian Hill High School. I've been here long enough now that I've had students of students uh, continue to have that. That's kind of a thrill. I started right out of college and I've never left home. I taught summer school and then in the fall was, I was hired to teach mechanical drawing one, two, three, and four. In 1975, our art classes didn't have a photography class. So I was an amateur photographer and I thought, well, I'll include a class in that. So when I started coaching in 1969-70, I uh, coached for three years and we were CHL champions for three years. So in the 80s is when I got interested in computer science and recertified. Uh, and also, uh, we had computers just in a couple spots in the building. Uh, I remember the first one appeared in the library and you had to sign it out. Uh, so that was, that was kind of interesting. In the 90s, we networked our district so that there was a computer in every classroom as well as a computer laboratory in each building. And the teachers had a workstation and the workstation also had a television. We can distribute um, news programs or panel discussions like this throughout the buildings. So that started my interest in what kind of media can we put on these televisions. Hi, and welcome to the first ever Indian Hill Middle School News Report. I had a very avid videography student named Anthony DeMarco, who I had for four years working in the video program. He had a vision of doing telev televised sports. In 1997, we produced our first football game, and it was done dragging a bunch of computer monitors down to the football stadium and it was quite a uh, uh, monster setup. Here's a replay of it. The quarterback rolls on, is not pressured. The quarterback gets off a good pass to the corner of the end zone. The receiver goes up and caught the ball. Look it right into his hands. Excellent play. And musicals and anything that we could do. So that got me started with the track to uh, add more. We'll be bringing you the game tonight on the Indian Hill Television Network. The CHL on IHTN is brought to you by the Indian Hill Boosters. What's been added since we moved from the old building to the new building is additional space for our video technology program. I am uh, a lifelong learner and if there's an opportunity for me to learn something new then I'm excited about that and as a result of that Technology provides that newness every year. I would not be where I am today without the quality of the students that come through the program. Uh, you, you give them opportunities, you, you give them the tools and the resources, and they can run with it. We were running all analog standard definition video. With the help of Mr. Ginn, who is one of my biggest supporters over the years to help me upgrade all of this, everything that we started producing in 2009 to the present day is high definition and that just changed the world. At the beginning of the pandemic, we were ready uh, with the technology and the skills to operate the equipment so that we could live stream events that across the district uh, that was useful because as an example, we could have sports, but we couldn't have spectators. Uh, we could have board meetings, but we couldn't have spectators. So we became uh, a valuable resource to provide service uh, for our community. That need of my services is what drives me to want to do more and so when anyone asks me can we do this the answer is always yes I know I'll find a way to do it these are some of the closest friends that I've I've made over my lifetime they make me proud proud to know that I had a part in their success
Denny, welcome to Masterclass. I wish that people could see this wonderful studio that we're in, but since they can't, why don't you create a visual for us that would include some of the courses that you teach? Be happy to. Um, first off, this studio was created out of the image of a news station. And so back in 1994, I started the class and not knowing which direction it would go, it evolved into this. So my classes are Video Technology One, where the students learn all of the studio operations as well as developing and producing individual video projects that are digital storytelling. Video Technology Two is an advanced level uh, where they do a lot more in-depth projects like commercials and documentaries as well as mentoring the younger Video Tech One students in all of the uh, studio operations. And lastly, we have a Braves Beat production class whose main responsibility is to produce a weekly news program to inform the student community as well as the greater community, which is published on YouTube. So it is a real good service opportunity, but the students, they're involved in every aspect. So they are leaders, they are producers, they're directors, and all of those pieces. Well, I can, I can share that I have I have seen these videos that are created by the students and they're incredible, but even beyond me, they're recognized and there's a particular organization that supports the Blue Chip Awards. So for those people who are unfamiliar, tell us about the Blue Chip Awards. Well, the Blue Chip Awards, uh, it really comes from the public access centers and uh, public access TV, which is really a government regulation. And so they support public access producers. And there are a lot of professionals out there that do these. And uh, we as a school uh, have an opportunity to participate. So annually they have a contest where you can submit your work and then it's judged by a whole large committee. Then you see where you stack up. And uh, we won our first blue chip in 1997, long time ago. And uh, since then you can see by our wall of fame that we have accumulated quite a few blue chips over the years. I think it's incredible for our students to have the opportunity to um, celebrate and evaluate their own growth in this field, both internally by looking at their progress over time, but also comparing it to their peers across the greater area. And, and to find out that, in fact, they're really outstanding in the work that they're producing. So as you know, Denny, we have just initiated a five-year strategic plan, and that five-year strategic plan has three focus areas, learners as doers, learners as individuals, and learners as the whole child, and it has 10 different initiatives. Today, we'd like to focus on one of those initiatives. It's called student agency. So let me just read the definition of that quickly. It's the engagement and authority over one's learning over time, place, pace, and path. And when I think about what happens in this studio, it is such a great example of student agency that's already happening. So I'd love to hear your opinion about that. How does student agency show up every day here in this studio? It's just ingrained in the program. Uh, we have uh, time management is critical in order for us to achieve a weekly program. Uh, time management is also important in the video classes because there are deadlines that they have to, to hit. Uh, but they also have choice. And it's important, I think, for students to have their own voice and their choice in the projects that they work on. And in the case of Brazebeat, like, what are the topics? What, what's important for the student body to hear and to know? And so, you know, choice and voice <laughs> and time is all put together with students at the center. Mm -hmm. And that's where I believe that fits very that, well. That's such a great explanation. Y you mentioned something that I think is really important. I, I could probably stand up and give a speech about the excellence um, of our students in academics, arts, and athletics, and the things, and our talented faculty, and what they do to support students' growth in that area. Sometimes there's other skills that students gain beyond the traditional set of skills related to, let's say, the academics of science and social studies, math, English language arts, world language, performing arts, visual arts, those things. I'd love to hear what are those skills that you think students build by being part of this program? I think the most important part of it is being a part of a team. So it relates very much to what athletics and sports achieve. 
Uh, but if you're not a sports-minded person, where would you get that? Well, here's an opportunity. So if you take one of these video classes, immediately you're part of a team. And all of those same features come into play. There needs to be a quarterback or a leader. There needs to be good team players and supportive members. But in this case, the other skills are the tech side. Some of our students are performers and others are on the tech side. And, and many of them do both. And so there's multifaceted students. So the skills are pretty much like a business environment, um, you know, and, and post-secondary. When they go to college and they take classes, they're going to be in charge of their own path. And, right. and, and I give them that opportunity here. Right, so. right. Well, what a great example of modeling the expectations because I can, I can share what a great teammate you are to me. So I can imagine what that means for the students. Um, you've changed your focus as a teacher several times over the last several years. Um, you started as an industrial technology teacher, then moved into technical education. And so I, I just really appreciate um, your ability to think forward and to predict the future and how you can shift your focus as a teacher to best meet the needs of what our students are going to need in the future. So Denny, what's coming next? Well, we're ready for the crystal ball. Yeah, please. <laughs> I've been uh, uh, kind of at the forefront of that in this school district for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, looking for what's in the future is an impossible thing to do. But as I have traversed my path from the old shop days to technology to computers and, and into video, I, I see this whole world going virtual, going digital, and, and cloud-based. Mm -hmm. So the smartphone will be the center, I believe, of what the students and, and, and the people in the workplace will be relying on for productivity as well as for entertainment. Now we know that that's a good part of what, what is done now. But it is a very, very effective tool. And when you think about whether it's a smartphone app or a cloud-based app, from Google or some other platform, it's going to be the wave of the future, in my opinion. And I think we need to push our curriculum in that same direction. Well, in closing, I just want to say what an inspiration you are to me. Uh, I see every day that you have the perfect combination of supporting our students as the whole child and in helping them to create a future that includes not only all the technical skills that they need, but also all the skills that they need to just be good employees and good friends and good partners and good neighbors and all of those things as well. So um, I, I feel like um, it's really a special program that, that you won't find readily available in a lot of places. And really it's because of you, Denny. So thank you so much for all that you do. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for being part of Masterclass.